Good morning. How is everyone today? I hope it's bright and sunny for you, just like it is for me outdoors today. And I hope you have a lovely spring day and that you're able to go outside and get some fresh air and some vitamin D. But today, you're here with me, Anna Walker, also known as Felt It. And I've been creating for about as long as I can remember. Um, I usually create using felt and fibers. And the past several weeks and for the next two and a half weeks, we'll go two weeks into May. So we've got two weeks after this week. Um, I'm coming to you every day, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. And we're doing a little art project together. Art Lessons with Anna, our own little internet create date. And today we're making penny spinners. Now, this is an old timey kind of um, toy that you can make just using some cardstock and some glue. And uh, you need some scissors and some crayons, markers, or colored pencils. And we'll create some penny spinners. So let's uh, move the camera down and let's get started. Okay, so this is a penny spinner. You can see it's just some cardstock I've colored on one side and it's got a penny stuck through the middle of it. Now, when you spin it, you can see all kinds of cool designs, but you can also see, and I'm lousy at spinning these. You guys are probably a whole lot better at these spinning these than I am. But you can see that the colors just sort of blend together when you get a good spin going. And I'm going to try it. Whoa! There it goes. Down spinner. Live TV. What are you going to do? Here we go. Let's see if we can get a really good spin. Okay, there we go. See how the yellow and the red sort of combine to make it look orange? Well, we're going to play with some color like that. And so I used yellow and red on this side. We're going to color the other side. Maybe yellow and blue and see what color comes up when we spin. And then we've got another one that we'll work on. But let's start out at the beginning, okay? Let's figure out what we need first. We're going to need some glue. Um, I also used some clothespins to help hold the two pieces together. We're going to need to cut two circles out of our cardstock. And for cardstock, I'm using just a leftover piece of um, scrapbook scrapbooking paper card stock and I'm drawing on the um, other side of it. I drew my circles just on the other side. You can use regular card stock or you can use a scrap of something like this like I did. But we just use something round. I used my glue jar and I used a marker to draw the circle around the outside of it. We're going to need scissors to cut these out. We're going to need some clips to hold it together when we glue those two pieces together to make one. And then you're going to need either some colored pencils or some markers or crayons or chalk, something to color up your cardstock. Now, I decided that we would do some color play with this. I've got the pencil sharpener there in the way. Let me move some things here. I decided we'd try some color play. So working to see what color we get when the red and the yellow mix up and we get an orange if we can get a good spin on it. See how we get more of an orange and then we see the individual shapes again. So we're gonna play with color play on this. But first, let's cut out our circles, okay? Now you remember how we do our cutting. We let the scissors be straight and we don't move them and we move the paper or the cardstock that we're cutting with our other hand while we're cutting things out. And that gives us a lot more control. We don't have any jagged pieces in our cut lines that we have to worry about. It just gives us a much smoother cut. And we can come back in if we got a little outside the line and we can re restart, but it gives us just such a much more smooth edge when we're able to use our other hand and not our scissor hand to move the paper that we're cutting. It's just a trick from paper cutting experts. I didn't think of it. I learned from them just like you're learning from me. So we're just cutting out our circles. And if I get outside the line, I can come back and I can start again. Let our scissors stay stable and our other hand moves the paper and turns the paper and that way we get a nice smooth cut. 
I hope that you've been practicing your cutting with your scissors staying straight and your other hand moving whatever you're cutting. I hope that you're doing a good job and that you feel like you've been practicing this a lot. So we've got our two circles cut out. And I'm gonna take the clips off of this one because we'll get to the next stage with this one, but we're gonna need those clips to hold these pieces together. So what we're gonna do next is take our glue. Now you can use just regular um, school glue. I am using a little bit of tacky glue because um, it has a little less water in it, so it will um, dry a lot faster than Elmer's glue, you know, or school glue will. And I'm just putting it right along the edge of one of the circles. Let me flip this up here. Come on, fingers. There we go. So I just put the glue right around the edge. I don't want to have any glue in the center because that's where we're going to cut our slit for a penny to go through. So I just want to have it around the edge. I'm going to put the other one right down on top of it. So we've got the two circles glued together. Just going to kind of press it in place. And then while it dries, I'm just going to have my clips here, my clothespin clips. And I'm just going to put them all around the edge so that it holds these two together nice and tight. The reason I'm doing this, if we don't have the edges nice and tight together, it could make it even more difficult for us to get a good spin. So if I've got the glue right along the edge and I've got the clips right along the edge, it's gonna hold those two pieces together really, really well. Now, these two are already dry. I just did these this morning. And you can see I've got a couple of little areas where I'll want to trim off. And so I'm gonna do that right now. Just trim off those little edges that are coming outside. And I'll trim from both sides just so that I've got it as rounded as it can be. And we're just gonna trim this off nice and easy. Do your best not to bend these, okay? Because if you bend them or you put a little um, kink in them, it will affect how they spin for you, okay? So getting my scraps over here in my trash pile. All right, so now what we need to do is figure out where we're gonna put the slit for our penny. <clears throat> now I chose a circle that is almost perfectly three inches square, okay? So I've got my grid here. You can use this with um, just a couple of um, cross lines going up and down and going across to find where the middle is if you want. I'm putting it on my grid paper because I've got these little lines that I can focus on and I've got a little scrap of paper here. This is the center. If I line it up on this line of dots on my grid pattern and then if I look here, I can put my penny right in the middle of where this square is and I can make a little dot here and I can make a little dot here and then I can take and connect those dots and now I know where the center is and how big the slit is going to be okay if a penny is too small you can use a quarter you can use a half dollar, you can use whatever size coin you want. Just make sure that your circle is bigger than your coin. Um, but this is where we're gonna cut the slit. Now, the next part, I want you to get some help. If you're not a bigger kid, if you're a bigger kid, you can probably do this. I'm gonna use what's called an X-Acto knife, and this is a very, very sharp blade. And I want you, if you're using an X-Acto knife, or if you're using an open pair of scissors to do this, and this is another way to do this, I want you to have some help from a grown-up, because all I'm gonna do is just draw my slit right along that line, and I'm gonna pull it through a couple of times so that I've got that opening right where I need it to be. Okay, and now we've got our slit. I'm gonna make sure that my penny fits through the slit, 
If it doesn't, then I'm gonna cut through with my X-Acto knife very carefully. I'm a grown-up, I know how to do this and be safe. If you are not a grown-up, I want you to have a grown-up there so that you can be safe too. But now my penny will just slide right in there into the middle and we've got a penny spinner ready to go. So now all we need to do is decorate it, right? So I'm gonna take the penny out and this is the fun part. You can do any design you want. You see, I did kind of a flowery design on this one. And I'm actually gonna take the penny out of this one too because we have two sides that we can decorate. But I wanted to play with color to see what colors would turn up if we used some colors that we know are supposed to blend together. So I know that red and blue are supposed to make purple, right? So I think on this next one, I'm going to do some round dots with my red and then I'll color blue in between. And then when we spin it, we'll see what we get there and see if we're right. And like I said, you know, you can do any design that you want. You could do a big design, you could do a little design. You can do lines, and maybe lines is what we'll do on the next one to try our colors out. But just figure out a design that you wanna do and let's play with some colors and let's see what colors we get mixing up when we spin this, okay? So now I'm just gonna put some blue and just scribble kind of between the lines here. You, like I said, you can use crayons, you can use markers, you can use colored pencils, you can use chalk, anything you want that you've got on hand, you use that. And let's just have some fun making some fun designs and playing with the colors and seeing what happens when we mix some colors without mixing them. Because what's happening is we really are mixing the colors because we're mixing the colors when we spin Spin our penny spinner because that makes our eyes see those colors as mixing together. It's an optical illusion that the colors are mixing to form another color, but that's the cool thing about how our eyes were made. They can take things that are one way and they can see them in another way. And that's why art is so amazing because all of us see those things in different ways. And that's why every artist does things a little differently because they're showing you, they're trying to show you how they see the world. And we're trying to just play with our perspective. Perspective is each person's individual view of what the world looks like. And that's why art is so different. All right, so we have our blue and our red. Let's test it out. What do you think? Is it gonna turn purple? Can Miss Anna spin it? Oh, I like that. I'm gonna take the camera down and I'm gonna see if I can get it a little closer to the spin. There we go. Try it again. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, I'm going to put the camera back up again. That was a little wonky. Sorry about that. I think that was really cool the way that turned out. But now we have another side to um, design, and we've got another side to design here. So let's see what color haven't we mixed. We haven't mixed blue and yellow. Maybe we should mix blue and yellow. What do you think? I like the markers that I'm using right now because they make this go, make designing this go a little bit faster. And so I think for this one, I'm just gonna do lines and just do it sort of like sun rays. You know how when you're drawing a sun, you've got those rays of sunshine that are coming down. I'm gonna do that with the yellow and the blue and let's see what happens. And you don't have to be perfect with this. You could be messy if you want. You can draw squiggly lines if you want. All right, now let's put some blue in here. 
and I'm not going to fill up the entire space. I'm just going to put in lines like I did with the yellow. Oh, I know what I'm going to do for the next one. It's going to be fun. Okay, so we've got the blue and the yellow there, and we'll test that out in a minute. But I'm going to try something here that I think we will all enjoy. Roy G. Bibb, red. Where's my orange, yellow, green, blue, and then purple. I know I have a purple in here. There's the purple. Blue, indigo, violet. Um, we could do... We could do that. All right, so what I'm going to do is do a spiral. I'm just going to draw a spiral with each color going out. And let's see if we get a rainbow effect. There's our red, our orange, and now our yellow. green. Oh, we might run out of room. And if we do, we'll just have to go with the colors that we've got here. And where we can fit them in, here's our blue. Whoops, we've got a little edge here. We can do the blue. There we go. And we'll call this indigo. Call this violet. All right, so let's try these out, shall we? <laughs> I like the rainbow spiral. What do you guys think? I think that one's awesome. All right, let's see. And see, the cool thing is we did these double-sided, so we can have fun with both sides of this. Let's try our blue and yellow and see if we get green. You think we're going to get green? I think we are. Let me see if I can get this in. It's not staying straight. Let me try coming through the other side and see if that'll work better. We do get green. That's awesome. So now we have two double-sided penny spinners that we can have some fun playing with. And that's our, our project for today, penny spinners. Who knew that you could have so much fun with pennies, markers, and paper? Who knew? I'm gonna flip the camera. Hi everyone, I hope you had fun with these today. I really like the way the rainbow one turned out. Um, tomorrow we're gonna make a couple of cards because everybody likes to get happy mail. Everybody likes to have something special and Mother's Day is coming up really soon, so these would be perfect for Mother's Day. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say for right now. We'll come back tomorrow, and we'll have fun making some cards. And I am so glad that you're here with me today and that you've been with me these past few weeks. I'm looking forward to another couple of weeks, and then it'll be summertime, and we'll all take a break until the fall. Um, but you will be able to look at the videos all summer long because they're on my YouTube page, and you can find them without any trouble at all by looking at Anna Walker Designs Facebook page or by going to stabthingsintoexistence.com and checking that out. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great, beautiful, sunshiny day. Bye.